Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming out for a little and over. Now, at this stage, uh, you should be able to know, unlike the President of the United States, because we are in the middle, still at the time of this filming, we don't even know who the President of the United States is going to be. But we certainly understand ANOVA. ANOVA is a very important function in our and in a lot of research based on medicine, uh, psychology, just a broad range of academic disciplines, but this is going to be for weight loss. See, I need to lose a little weight. Uh, so ba I already have the data set up and I wanted to show you something about the data set that's very important is that one, it's big. Uh, well, it's not too big, only 34. But one of the things that NOVA is used for often is, and it talks about variants, but it's really comparing the means of different groups. So that's why this variable here is just called the group. So this is weight loss. So the control group, as you should know, particularly if you've taken other classes with me, it does not get the independent variable, in this case, the diet. So the people in the control group, the specimens, I guess, uh, they are not dieting. The second group is diet. And then the third group is this diet X. I don't know, really, let's say extreme, it means. So they're on an extreme diet. And this could be used if you think of medicine, like during COVID, uh, these people don't get the vaccine. These people get a vaccine. And these people get, I don't know, an extreme vaccine. And then they try to see if later on, this is week one, week two, week three, if there's a difference in the means based on, well, in this case, uh, the, the uh, dependent variable is weight. So you see four, five, six you know, seven, three, you know, we're obviously assuming that's how much if you're on a diet, you're losing. But this is very common in such a broad spectrum of research is using this type of uh, function. Well, I call it a function because it's an R, but approach to research ANOVA, the variance between the means of these different groups. And we're going to see it in a minute. So one of the things that's really interesting about this is R offers just a really broad range of different ANOVAs. For the, this simple video, we are going to do the AOV function. Now, it's important to note that that's a sequential function. Now, this is only a one way. Basically, we have one independent variable. Uh, and But if you have more, you're going to have to use different types of ANOVA. And the more popular ones, although the AOV is in regular R, is in the car, and because I'm from Massachusetts, I say car, the car package. So as that loads, we're going to see after that, it's actually pretty interesting because that you won't have the sequential ANOVA. You'll have others that allow you to do what we call type 2 and type 3 ANOVA. So here you can see, watch, and it's with the capital. We won't be using it here, but that's with the car package, a very popular package in R for good reasons. What we're going to use is, I'll just call it A, we're going to use the AOV. That's um, common, and as if you see, it's the same thing as the LM function in the sense that we put it the same way. So we basically have, let's do week two. Week one is a little, you know, I mean, that's too fast uh, to see. So we got week two. And, you know, you use the tia tilde like I always go over. And then we use the group, which is the dieting. We have a control group. Remember what we're doing here. Control, no independent variable. Diet, the independent variable. And then diet X, the extreme, well, however they measure that, I don't know. Maybe you don't eat it all for two weeks or something like that. So you basically get the data weight loss. Now, because I have more data on here, I like to tell R the data that I'm using because sometimes it messes up. So basically you have these three groups and we're seeing if there's a change and the weight loss after two weeks. So as you obviously know from previous videos or, or taking my class, that now you have the summary and you put it in. So don't forget, some people always tell me, oh, you went too fast. Uh, this is the function AOV. 
it's regular ah it's it's ah by the way it's not ah so it's the regular function in ah you don't have to download a package for that the car package has become very popular for more advanced ANOVA, which uh we won't be doing in this video but you have the f value that gives us the p value and notice this it is coming up significant and that's very very important but there's a few things we're going to learn here if you see the group we don't know really which uh, variables, the control, the diet, or the diet X, or which group within this variable is significant. And to what? Like, for example, is diet to control significant? Is diet X to diet significant? Is diet X to control significant? So this is one of the, uh, the second things I want you to understand from this short video is that we're also going to run a post-test. Post-tests are very popular and important in statistics because it allows you to retest, say, uh, some kind of result you have, or in this case, you know, with different algorithms, different approaches, or in this case, you could pro you could possibly be doing uh, uh, another post test that will allow you to see which groups are significant. And this is called what I call the Turkey LSD. It's really Turkey uh, HSD. But to remember it, I always in my head I do funny things. So I see if you put an R there and an L there, it's actually turkey on LSD. So that must be pretty insane. So this only, you can only use the ANOVA function with this. So we already ran it. We have A, that's what I called it. Remember, you have to assign it a name. And then we come up and that's an awesome, one of the things about R is that uh, there's so many post-tests and R, I think even though learning the script can be a little challenging for people, it's very interesting to the extent to which you know it has great post test GVLM function we talked about um, and others. So here we start seeing the diet control is not actually significant because it's over the 0 0.05, which is often used in psychology, uh, medicine, and other academic disciplines. But we start seeing diet versus control is very significant, meaning the people on the extreme diet and control, there's a huge difference in the result between people not taking a diet and taking the extreme. Not so much with a regular diet and control. So maybe you're wasting your time if you're just regular diet because <laughs> the other people in control are losing weight too. But then there's a lot of placebo. There's a lot of problems with this when we do research. Uh, you know, obviously you can't monitor these people 24 seven. So maybe they are overeating and really not dieting and just saying they're dieting to like say, please their husband or wife or something. But regardless, these are the results we have. So then we have from diet to diet X, there actually is a significance. So we see that that's significantly lower than the 0 0.05. Now, as you know, if you've taken my classes or you've uh, seen my videos, a little incredulous about just using the p-value, but for the purpose here, this is a pretty good test on a post-test to see which one is significant based on p-value. As a lot of statisticians have challenged the role of the p-value, do we overuse the p-value? Uh, and one of the reasons I think we overuse it, one, it's easier to understand because it either is or isn't. Uh, you know, if back in the day before you had all these software packages to run statistics, you know, you went back in the book and where's the critical value, what's my p-value? But now, you know, it's, it, we have to expand our understanding of st statistics and significance. It's difficult to say, generally speaking. But the point is, is we do a post test and we get the significant level for each one. That's pretty cool and not that many uh, lines of code to get it. So you're basically seeing there's no significance between diet and control, very significant between diet X and control, and significance between diet X and diet because it's under 0 0.05. So you basically see that and we're doing group ANOVA. The other thing I want to show you, and this is kind of a cool thing, I'm not using ggplot, this is just the basic graphics of um, 
uh, R is that a good one. And it's like, we're actually running it because look at, I use the tilde. So if you uh, take a look at this, we get the box plot. And this is good. Uh, you, this actually shows us exactly what we're doing. We're comparing groups. That's what we're doing. We're comparing groups. So you start seeing, oh, wow, I can understand visually now that the control group compared to the diet, there isn't that much difference. There is a difference, but according to the algorithm used in the AOV, it's not significant. And then you start seeing, okay, this diet is much more uh, significant. So let me uh, zoom that in and do a new share because that's what it does. All right, uh, you should be able to see that big. So we start seeing this is, and remember the box plot, there's no outliers, which is interesting. That would be a good quiz question. After you do the AOV, you have to do a box plot. How many uh, outliers do you see all together? It wouldn't be this data because we already ran it, but you know, there could be a few outliers here. That's one of the things I think in box plots, one of the biggest values of it is seeing the outliers. There is none, but in this case, it's really seeing, you know, the different quartiles, median, et cetera. Uh, and you basically see that that we're comparing these different groups. And you start seeing that the weight loss, which is allegedly good, according to this, is very significant with the diet. Look at all the way up to nine pounds, which is good after two weeks. I mean, I don't know if they starved themselves or whatever, but, you know, well, let's say, you know, the median point six, four, and three. So yeah, you start seeing four and three, that's not that much, but then you start seeing, you know, six, but then you start seeing there's a good amount of people up here as well uh, in that last quartile. So that's very, very interesting to see it play out on uh, us. just a simple box plot, not ggplot2, but the, um, the uh, default box plot chart with, with uh, R. And, you know, it just has a controlled diet and diet X. So that is it for this one. And, you know, I wanted to make it quick. Uh, we got a lot to do, like seeing who the president of the United States is. Whoever thought Georgia would possibly be a swing state, I did not. Um, and Arizona, where I am, actually could go both the Senate and the presidential election blue. So this is very exciting as well. We, we need to run some data on this election, who's more likely, less likely, maybe with the chi-square later, to vote for Biden or Trump at the time of this recording. So take care, everyone. Uh, we're still under, you know, somewhat uh, bad conditions with the COVID. Stay safe. And please, you know, ask me any questions on this. Take care.